Hello everybody, this is Sky Darmus. Um, this is quite an important update about cosmology. Um, for many years, since um, 2019, I was saying that the post-decoupling age of the universe is 42 trillion years, and that's still correct, but um, it's no longer just the post-decoupling age of the universe, it's the full age. Because it, as it turns out, the universe cannot grow before decoupling. Um, basically, before decoupling, um, it's not possible for ordinary matter to form structures. And previously it was assumed that um, although ordinary matter cannot do that, exotic matter would be able to do that. Um, and because gravity is always positive in space part dualism theory, um, it was assumed that that would be possible for exotic matter to do that, but if inertial mass is still negative, then the resulting gravity will, the, the relative acceleration will still be uh, negative. Um, and so in, in, in the cosmology of SPD, quantum gravity, which is based on um, the entropic expansion principle, um, you can only have expansion when there's entropy, local entropy increase. The expansion of the universe is um, is is cancel basically canceling the uh, or offsetting the um, entropy increase inside black holes. So when there are no black holes around, you cannot have an expansion. And so the expansion can really only start in the moment of decoupling. So what happens to exotic matter is um, if you put a negative number here in the uh, uh, gravitational acceleration equation um, basically um, you take this over and cancels out but um, this is negative so basically this this whole thing becomes negative from the perspective of the of let's say the larger mass is positive uh, from that the perspective of the larger mass when you take that over, this is still positive, but this is a, um, but the big M cancels out. You have the small M. Small M is very small compared to the big M that is uh, left over here. So the relative acceleration is a very big term here, uh, my very big minus term, and then a small plus term. Um, and so the end result will still be uh, a relative acceleration between the two that is still negative. When we look at the different combinations, this here, the um, um, the normal matter is is positive, the, the inertial mass is positive, and the exotic matter is negative. So when this is bigger, you get negative. When the ordinary mass is bigger, then you get a, a negative acceleration, because the the big mass is not going to be moved by the small mass. The small mass is going to move away. It's going to fall up. Um, and yeah, so when the small mass is bigger, then you get a positive uh, acceleration, relative acceleration. When both are the same, then it's zero. When both are positive, you get a positive acceleration, and both are negative, you get a negative acceleration. So um, exotic matter, as I've stated already many years ago, um, is absolutely cold. Um, you can read the reasons for that in my book. Um, it basically boils down to um, the uncertainty principle and, and, and being being measured and, and exotic matter only interacts through gravity so it's not uh, not easy to measure. So anyway, um, when it's very cold that means it behaves much like an electron uh, a gas electron gas. So an electron gas it will um, the electrons repel each other and they form a Wigner crystal. So you have this Wigner crystal, but not with electrons, but exotic matter. And in the moment of the coupling, ordinary matter can uh, latch onto those um, lattice points, this uh, Wigner crystal, and um, you have a black hole, you have a primordial black hole. And um, and when, when it does that, basically, the the, sing, the individual points in the lattice are not not independent, 
they are part of that whole lattice structure which extends in infinitely so you have a very big um, very big negative mass here so the, this is the bigger one Neg the, the exotic matter is, is the bigger one and so the attraction is always positive here and so um, we end up with a cosmology um, that is much more evidence-based because we, we basically got rid of all the time before decoupling so originally the time before decoupling would have been 44 trillion years and the time after decoupling uh, 42 trillion years um, and there, there was an, not much evidence or, or uh, let's say no evidence at all for the time before decoupling there was this um, um Baronic acoustic oscillations test that I did and um yeah that didn't turn out quite right and also when you um look at galaxies they grow together with this supermassive black hole in the middle and that implies that they the supermassive black hole in the middle and the galaxy around it they form together and you can really not have a a, a, a uh, even 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 if it was possible to have a black hole, primary black hole, in before decoupling, ordinary matter wouldn't really react to it. It's too hot; it would just fly around crazily. It doesn't doesn't much react to to gravity. Or okay, maybe local locally, locally it probably would. But um, yeah, but it turns out that um, exotic matter would just form this um, this grid this. Um, uh, Wigner crystal and um, not, nothing could happen before decoupling. Uh, I mean, exotic matter cannot accumulate by itself, it will form this grid. And ordinary matter, it cannot form any structures before decoupling. So, um, yeah, a lot, is, a lot has uh, changed in cosmology. It's the biggest change since uh, 2019. 2019 was when I calculated the age of the universe. Uh, back in Hong Kong. Okay, that's all for today. See you. Bye-bye.